very special good night to everyone. <laughs> Welcome to Calypso Showcase. I know, something is different. Alvin looking different, I don't know. Alvin <laughs> is having a long deserved holiday. My name is Errol Fabian, for those of you who don't know, and welcome to Calypso Showcase. My guest tonight, none other than Willard Harris, the Relator. Welcome, Relator. Welcome, um, Alvin, I mean, Errol <laughs> Fabian. <laughs> yeah. um, Relator, we have so many things to talk about. You and I, we lime, we do all kinds of things together, but we wouldn't get into everything. Mm -hmm. um, I know you as a fellow that's answer not only talking, but in song. Mm -hmm. And we right into the the middle of the festive Christmas season, and I want you to tell the viewers right off, give them some advice, a suggestion for Christmas this year. This is just a friendly suggestion to spend Christmas in a recession. Make a new friend for the Christmas this year. Boom, 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 boom. You don't need no big set of money to spend a Christmas and be happy. So make a new friend for the Christmas this year. You hear? Christmas is a joy that comes from above. Christmas is a time the whole world falls in love. Spread your arms apart, hug up and kiss your partner. Say it from your heart, let's be friends. I tell you, let's be friends, let's be friends this year. <laughs> you don't have to panic and run wild. All you need is just a charming smile. Make a new friend for the Christmas this year. Boom, boom, bing, bing, dum, dum, dum. Come off that frustrating money trip. What you need is warm companionship. So make a new friend for the Christmas this year. You're here. Christmas is a joy that comes from above. Christmas is a time the whole world falls in love. Spread your arms apart, hug up and kiss your partner. Say it from your heart. You like that part? I just love it. Be <laughs> I tell you, let's be friends. I tell you, let's be friends this year. Ru -du 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 -du. We later have been years since I left the Calypso tent. And I know that you've been going all over the world. You've been on the road, so to speak. Tell us a bit about where you've been, what you've been doing since I left the Calypso tent. Well, I have been on the road, as you rightfully said. Um, I've been to all over the world and other places. Um, Germany, Italy, Switzerland, um, France, London, the Virgin Islands, Canada, Miami, Washington, California, Barbados, Grenada, St. Lucia. Well, you see, Trinidadians don't know about this. We don't hear about what Relator has been doing. Um, I think nostalgia is the last thing Trinidadians really hear about. Yes, the yes. After nostalgia, well, I, I went on the road. And I mean, when you're on the road, you are not in, on, in the mainstream. When you're on the road, it means that you're on the road and you're, you're trying to make a living. Um, recordings and everything has to take second place, and um, you're on the road. You're making a living. So this is what has happened since nostalgia, since 1984. How do you manage all of this related? Um, as a performer, do you have the time and the know-how to like manage your business affairs? No, well, I have a manager. Um, um, I, I like that, you know, because <laughs> only yesterday you were saying, boy, all you does go all about and talk about your career, and you don't talk about the people behind the scenes. So Mr. Errol Pugh, who has been my manager for over 10 years now, I think, you know, it's 15 years about, um, apart from managing the relator, Mr. Errol Piru is also the manager of uh, Winston Peters, the Gypsy, and uh, Marcia Miranda. Um, a good, you know, he's all right kind of friend, you know. He, um, I took away his 10% recently as, you know, managerial fees. After doing a feasibility study, I, I think I'll give him 15% in the new year. No, if things work out. So you think um, Calypsonians who do not have themselves a manager, you think that is a worthwhile thing to look at? 
No, well, some people can handle themselves very well. Um, no offense meant, um, <laughs> but um, <laughs> it is always better to have someone to speak on your behalf. You know, you, 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 reach, you reach out, and I mean, you get... And you here know. in the group, Brian related that you would like to become an announcer one day, or you think you have the makings of a good announcer, and I think so too. So right now, I want to give you a full shy at announcing and announce what we have on the VCAS, this interview you had with Alvin recently. How about it? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, you are about to witness a recorded interview done with Mr. Alvin Daniel at Barataria not too long ago. <laughs> Later. I've been looking up all about for you, trying to get in touch with you to get you on Calypso Showcase. All I'm getting is this message on your phone, but somebody told me I'd find you down at the Flamingo, liming with the boys. Well, here I am, and I've found you now. Yes, well, the Flamingo is a place where I come, like, it's like the office, come to have a drink, and sometimes we um, have all those lessons here on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And a little extempo, I guess. Uh, well, well, you know, sometime too, yes, depending on who's around. Well, for the purpose of Calypso Showcase, we want to look at your life and your involvement in Calypso. Mm -hmm. And let's go right back to the days of Antique and tell us what it was like in those days. Well, it started on the Antique program. It started on the Antique program in um, 1965. Um, you know, Antique is an institution in Trinidad and Tobago. And um, I remember the year in question, we just... Um, I just had this calypso to go and sing, and I, I didn't even have a name. So it's when I was in the line going to register, because Auntie Kay is at the, is at the table and some little children forming a line. Mm -hmm. And when I was about four or five um, contestants away, I hear they're the using different names. So then it was right there, and then I decided to, you know, I had to come up with a name, and Relator just came out of the blue. I christened myself. What was the calypso you sang for that uh, competition? I think it was a calypso called Funny Names. Mm -hmm. uh, but, oh gosh, don't ask me to, to, to sing it, you know, I, I remember it in patches, you know. Mm -hmm. People who you find that have plenty fame, well, I notice all them people have funny names. People who you find that have plenty fame, well, I notice all them people have funny names. If you have a good name, you have to hush your mouth. It's only funny name people they're talking about. These names really funny, I talking as man. I arranged them, everybody could understand. Johnny Cash by Andrew Carr, he want to see Bill. Olive walk through Wesley Hall and she walking still. So while resting on Duncan Sands in America, she saw Eddie Fisher swimming in gold water. <laughs> I don't remember the rest. <laughs> but from a little fella, you had these ideas to put these little things together. Now, the next thing that, um, that people started to observe this guy later was in the bi-local competition. You, you, you are an institution as far as bi-local was concerned. Yeah. Uh, tell us about your involvement in bi-local competition? Well, the bi-local um, involvement uh, was uh, around the same time that I was involved with this guy called the Mighty Prowler. We used to do a duet. We were the only duet at the time singing calypsos. And um, he, he became interested, and I, I being a writer, I wrote about four in a row for the Mighty Prowler. Not four, but he won three of my compositions. And when we, we fell out, we had a little bit differences and we went separate ways. I went on the fourth year and um and i won the competition what year, what year was that that was 1970 so you have to check three years prior to that um oh, relators yeah. comp composition was one so it's not only joke that have four in a row that's a new one for you <laughs> all right and what tune did you sing in 1970 when you won the bi local I competition i don't remember the song i don't remember the song but i think that bush medicine was the other song that i i am um, i i would i use as the as the tune of choice yeah i don't think many people realize in those days you had to sing one on independence and you had to sing a tune of choice so bush medicine was your tune of choice so, yeah. which i'm sure you'll remember yes Nowadays, if you're sick, you're in plenty pain because it I have good medicine again. Nowadays, if you're not well, you're in plenty pain because it I have good medicine again. Nowadays, people does be sick for a week, long time, one day you're sick, next day you're on your feet. I live in at my granny, so I bong to know you can't beat a remedy of long ago. Long ago, if the cold giving you trouble, Bacano, Black Sage tea, or some soft candle, Vervine, Christmas, Bush, or Shadow Bear. Bung to pass your cold immediately. It is my belief you could settle yourself with sour soft leaf. Well, this this really started the the, the career, I think, of um, of the relator Willard Harris. 
and we two years later we saw you in 1972 put together a tune Gavaska. In fact, many people have it down that the 1972 finals at Dimash Crowd was one of the big years for Calypso. And I remember the success you had with Gavaska all over the country singing it. Tell us about how you came to compose this Calypso Gavaska and what it did for you. All right. Before I get into that, I, I think that you, you're jumping the gun a little bit there. Because um, <laughs> in 1971 now, you have mm -hmm. to remember, Mm -hmm. Which after yeah. Yes, that I made my debut at Lord Kitchener's tent. That mm -hmm. is when I started as a professional Calypsonian mm -hmm. in singing in a tent. And the song that I sang was Bush Medicine. So tell us what happened then in 72 with the tune Gavaska. Yes, well, as you know, I am a cricket fan from way back. And um, the West Indies playing in India at the Oval, I think it was 1970 or 71. And I, well, I was most present. And I couldn't understand why we had such a good team with fast bowlers, mm -hmm. a good batting lineup. And India only, to my mind, only had one batsman and was making three and four hundred runs against our attack. So I decided, look, I had to write something not to put down the West Indies, but, you know, to, to let, you know, in order for them to pull up their socks. Because I can't see, I mean, you remember, Daniel, after they get Gavaska, the whole team could fall up. Yeah. You know, and, and, but this man was making runs, you know, like every, every day. Yes, I mean, every, almost in every game, he, yeah. the man made runs. So I, de I decided, um, in, in, you know, to, to tell the West Indies, look, we have to do better than that. But at the same time, praising the man for his, his prowess. I mean, handling this little short guy, handling all these fellas, you know. Yeah. I think the thing that worked for you in that Calypso was the, the, the setting that you were able to create from the time you said, lovely day for cricket, yes. you were on a roll. Yes, it was on a roll. It's one of the Calypsos that I, I, I must have made that in, in within a half an hour. Because you see, I had a mental picture. I was there. Mm -hmm. I was there. I saw everything. Even even coming down to Beatty in a turban, Sobas, um, because the, on one of the days play, mm -hmm. um, Sobas became a father as well as, um, I think it was Beatty or right. somebody. And when he made his son, what he do? And right. Sort of so everything was, you know, it was there. It was a mental picture. So it was just a question of, you know, putting it down on paper. Well, I want you to take us back to that day and I want you to recreate the whole ambience for us. A lovely day for cricket. <laughs> Blue skies and gentle breeze. The Indians are waiting now to play the West Indies. A signal from the umpire. The match is going to start. The cricketers come on the field. They all look very Ira Pali Prasana, Gigi Boy and Wadeka, Krishna Murthy and Vishnu Mantad. Them boys could well play cricket on any kind of wicket. They make the West Indies team look so bad. We was in all kind of trouble. Joey Karu pull a muscle. Clive Lloyd get about three run out. We was in trouble without a doubt. It was Gavaska. The real master, just like a wall, we couldn't out the Vascar at all, and not at all. You know the West Indies couldn't out the Vascar at all. So let's talk about from '73 to '79. What happened? You, you know, we call it paying your dues, but um, somehow you were not able to get back in the Savannah during those years. No. What um, did related do? I was, I was a, a regular campaigner in the tent. As a matter of fact, I, I must have made the semi-finals almost every time mm -hmm. between um, 73 and, um, and 79. Because you have to remember that um, you had songs like um, Fundamental Changes, Death Pan Men, uh, Radio Stations, Guardian Lockout, all of these things coming up, coming up the road you know, it, it, between that period. But the songs were good, Spanish Senorita. All these songs came mm -hmm. w w within that time. But, you know, as, as I told you before, it wasn't easy to, you in know. Those days. Yes. Well, in 79, you got back in the Savannah singing radio stations and Guardian Lockout. Mm -hmm. And radio stations was one of your more popular tunes. Mm -hmm. These radio stations driving me mad. NBS Radio and Radio Trinidad. These radio stations driving me mad NBS Radio and Radio Trinidad 
Because of the operations today Is only foreign artists getting airplay So I have come to the conclusion That these foreigners own we radio station Is Shirley Bassey Curtis Mayfield Frankie Valley Captain Antini Barry White Three Dog Night, Stylistics, and Chai Light. Bob Jelly, Mongo Jerry, Lola Falana, and Grover Washington is all of these people who control we radio station. Natalie Lee Cole and David Soul is who have we radio stations under control. And very good indeed. And um, the following year, one of the high points in your career when you actually won the crown for the first and the only time with food prices and take a rest. Food prices, I mean, really speaking, well put together, well structured. And um, what triggered that one? Well, that is by, you know, going in the market every Sunday, you know, they send you in a message and you have your little list and you, you are among the, the vendors and the customers and people complaining and you know people saying things and uh, i remember i was in a, a, a lady's house and she was taking out the market goods and at every every um everything that she, you know every piece of item that she took out from the basket she was making a comment mm -hmm. you know imagine a song of imagine this and she's calling the prices you know mm -hmm. and then the one the line that hit me look at this thing 14 ounces of salt fish is 369, not even a pong, you know, and in those days, you know, so that line, that went in the head, I say, I have to, you know, that line has to stay, just as it, as was said. A friend of mine come and tell me about two months ago, to bring back the old time calypso, he said, but really the people keep asking everywhere, to bring back an old time reminder, I said, it's a good idea, without a doubt. But what the hell you want me to sing about? Is that he declare? Sing about the price of food and how things so dear. Oh, pro sell it a dollar for five, a dollar for celery, a dollar for sign. The race can run and the race race. Egg is six and eight dollars, no one doesn't. And those averages wrong a dollar ten. And it's one twenty-five a pound down for Bell and Jen. A lime long time was old talk and fun, but now a lime is ninety-five. 1980 was an important year. What was the prize like in 1980? Yeah, the prize was like $22,000. One of the highest paid uh, monarchs in, in up to that point. Yeah, that was a record. Now, defending your crown in 1981, you sang two tune, Our Children Deserve Better and China Syndrome. Tell us a bit about China Syndrome. Well, all right. Um, the China Syndrome was a spin-off or a reaction to the Calypso Take a Rest. Um, when I won in 1980 with food prices and take a rest, the, the norm in those days would have sent the winners, Panorama winners, um, Best Village winners, Calypso Monarch, whatever, in whatever category you won during the carnival competitions, you would go on a prize trip. Mm -hmm. So I think Catelli All-Stars went to China and some other group went, but the Calypso Monarch didn't get a prize trip. Mm -hmm. So then the, the media at the time, to my mind, didn't handle that properly. And um, they, I was left with the, with the, to, the public w went away with the perception that Relator was sour. Mm -hmm. Relator is sour grapes and he vex and he, he withdrawn and in a corner and he vex with the world. So I had to write this Calypso about, you know, to clear the air because the media didn't inform John Public as to why Relator didn't go mm -hmm. to, to, on a prize trip. So the China syndrome was just telling the people of Trinidad is a lovely place. If I don't go abroad, we have everything here. We have nice beaches. We have nice women. We have everything in Trinidad and Tobago. And one can be comfortable at home. I read lots of things on the newspaper. Relate a vex because he didn't go China. I get in vex, can't be true at all. Because I don't have time to think so small. But. I want John Public to know I was never invited to go And apart from all the bickering I don't feel that I really miss anything Because China don't have no kind of freedom 
They don't play mass or drink rum. They know nothing about all foods. I doubt if they have mangoes. They have no steel bar and calypso. So tell me where I rush in to go. I will not be so crazy to turn me back on Kupalani. Yeah. And our children deserve better. Our children deserve better was like um, a, a moralistic kind of approach to Calypso. You know, we as, as adults must set the example. People in, in high places, in high offices, in, in, in responsible positions must, must um, set good examples to the children. The bitter impasse with all the school teachers. Industrial unrest up at points, Lisa. The pulling and tugging in the police force. And the controversy over the construction of a race course. And then you have mistrust and misgiving. And the battle for a better standard of living. Senior citizens not practicing what they preach. And the elimination of our freedom of speech. We all know we, we had an incident with you in San Fernando and the, the toilet paper brigade. Yes. We want to go through that and we want to tell it from your point of view what happened and how did you react to it? Well, um, I, I, I was hoping that you will ask me um, about about how many times I went to the Savannah and my record in the well, Savannah, why not? and then and then come to that because there's a humorous twist to all of that. And perhaps you can tell us about that now. Give us your 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 history in Calypso leading up to that. Okay, well, you remember in 1972, if you if you ask me what my record in the Savannah is, I will tell you. Well, I've been to the Savannah four times. Mm -hmm. I, I made four savannas and a memorial park. <laughs> 72, Sorry. 79, 80, 81. Right? Yes, and well, do we, well, what happened in San Fernando? Well, I nearly made the savannah, so I reached as far as the memorial park because of the bottle painting <laughs> in San Fernando. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if that didn't happen, I would reach the savannah. <laughs> so it's, fa it's four savannas and a memorial, and a memorial park. And a memorial park. <laughs> but um, th this came about because of um, another thing: the media. You know, sometimes we have to knock the media because we feel that they're not. Um, being responsible. A guy came to me who is an arm of the newspaper, one of the newspapers at the time, and he was talking to me on the side of the street, on the side of the road, and um, I was talking to him like, you know, I'm speaking to anybody, not knowing that the gentleman was going to quote what I said. So we were talking about problems that people have when they go to perform in, in San Fernando, and I, I tell him it's one of the places that I don't, you know, fancy because I also feel that you don't get, um, a, you know, people don't listen to what you have to say properly. Isn't the atmosphere doesn't lend itself to listening. Mm -hmm. And the guy, he twisted everything and, and he made it look like San Fernando people was the worst people in the world. Mm -hmm. And I was projecting that. So to a lot of people in San Fernando, it looked like Relator was anti-San Fernando kind of. This is how he put it to the, to, to the public, which was very unfortunate, as you know. So when I went there, you know, I guess. And then I added to that, I never was interfered with. Um, prior to that, I, I, I always had a smooth run in, in San Fernando. I never had problems in San Fernando. But what, what, what he triggered off now was, uh, all right, people, the, the, the troublemakers there who come to heckle Calypsonians every year, they say, when they check back the files, they say, but wait, no, we never boo Relator. Who the hell is Relator? We, were dealing with we, we, had, we had to get Relator, boo here, we, we, we boo Sparrow, we boo the best of them. So Relator had to take some of that. Mm -hmm. It was it had nothing to do with ability and, and you know, performing badly. Yeah, because so, even before they heard your songs, they, they were ready exactly, for you. You go down to the tent, <laughs> when your tent go to San Fernando, you sing before you, in, in San Fernando, before you go into the semifinals. All the tents go once or twice, making the wrongs in San Fernando before you make semifinals. Not so. Mm -hmm. So the, the public will hear your songs when the tent visit San Fernando. Absolutely. And this was, a, this was in the year 1983, right? Somewhere 83 and 84, we got some toilet paper, some serious toilet paper. <laughs> but, um, that, was, that was good. Since the business closing down, local musicians leave in town. Some of them done down the sea for pastures fresh and green. And you can't blame them if they want to go. They 
can't make a decent living here in Trinbago. With this exodus and brain drain, I am certain sure. The headquarters of Calypso, no doubt, is not here anymore. For Calypsonians to make a record, they don't have to go abroad. It is a tough life, but it's no record. And the music that you come to us today is now mass produced in the USA. It is a bad blow for Trinidad and Tobago. If kids you don't know, we now import it the old time so. Did this influence you to, to get out of the tent scene and the competition scene? No. A lot of people, you see, because now that is another coincidence. Because of that happening at that time, a lot of people felt that, you know, we later again, media again, was uptight about it. That was not so. If you clearly remember, around the same time, we later started to do his own full-length concerts. Mm -hmm. And you have to remember that I was growing. I was growing. You know, and, and a total artist. Yes. You know, so if, and, 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 and up to that point, you have to remember now, from 1971 to 1974, mm -hmm. I am practicing 14 years in a Calypso tent. Mm -hmm. If you understand what I'm saying, 71 to 74, I mean to 84. Right? Is is I would have been 14 years in a Calypso tent. So then at that point, I wanted something. I wanted to grow. I wanted to see something else. I wanted to do something else. This brought about nostalgia. Well, well, nostalgia came around that same time, you know, and I mean, I felt that after practicing 14, 15 years in a tent, I had a, a fair enough repertoire to go out and do a one-man show, a full-length concert. Right. Now, let's talk about some of the other calypsos that you sang over the years that might not have been what we call competition tunes, but which has been like your trademark tunes, like Pan Man go Going Deaf. Yes, um, yeah, Deaf Pan Man was... Um, Deaf Pan Man was, I don't remember the year, but Deaf Pan Man was a, was a classic. At the time, the steel band, there was a big um, complaint about steel band men going deaf. You know, the tuning of the pan, the noise and so on, and it was affecting their hearing. Mm -hmm. And then, well, of course, Dr. William was a prominent figure at the time, mm -hmm. so the idea just um, went into one mm -hmm. Pan Man going deaf. The right. name of the mass is Dr. William. And bring them back. Yes, bring them back well was as, as, as a result of my, um, my, what do you call it, my experience with dealing with old people and the background from which I came, the area from which I was born, living with my grandmother, sort of, you know, and, 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 and being a, a culture enthusiast, you know, all of that rolled into, into, into a, a relator, nobody else would be inspired to make a calypso like bring them back. and even Bush medicine because of my upbringing and because of my background. Now and again, it's nice to go down memory lane. Now and again, it's nice to go down memory lane. A little bit of nostalgia is good for the soul. Reminiscing about the days of old, Trinidad and Tobago was really sweet when we remember the nice things we used to eat. You remember Krumara Indian sweetie? Bring them back, bring them back. I show the children today won't love chili BB. Bring them back, bring them back. I hardly see in guava trees and guava jam. Bring them back, bring them back. Coconut drop and cuvette poach jam. Bring them back, bring them back. Now one of the features of Nostalgia Concert was when you did the impersonations. One could almost see the, the gusto with which you approached this segment of the concert as though it's something you always wanted to do. Yeah, that's true. I remember as a kid, I used to hear about Sammy Davis Jr. I mean, I heard recordings of Sammy Davis Jr. In those days, we didn't have television. And it, I, I was fascinated from that very early age that how a gentleman can be changing his voice and impersonating all the different people. Mm -hmm. So that went into the subconscious, that went in, that was embedded, that was, it left an indelible mark on me, influence. And I always felt that we can do it with the local Calypsonians. I like doing Christo as well, and um, 
a little bit of Blakey and Douglas sometimes. But with the impersonation, sometimes you're dead on and sometimes you're not so mm -hmm. dead on. It's like a batsman in the wicket. Sometimes you make 100, sometimes you make 75, yeah. sometimes you make 50. But you know, sometimes when it's dead on, it's, 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 mm. it's a total... Record. But the novelty of using foreign people to sing calypsos, I think, is what caught the fancy of most people in the concert. Yes, well, um, it's, it's another extension, it's another um, yeah, extension, you know, it's another area of another side of Relator. And this is how Commander would song. Some guests at the wedding were a damn disgrace. You know they move away with the bride necklace. The musicians get a trumpet, saxophone, and bass. And they had everybody moving about in haste. Then an old man came down quite from south. You know they take he false teeth from inside him out. And a woman sit down finding she one man's son. You know they snatch it from she had and start to run They find the ice cream flavor should have essence of vanilla A little milk and sugar, how the cake more egg and butter The rice should be softer and the chicken should be younger But still they popping all the liquor from the decanter de masala Was raw and sour, all oh, the old sauce water It had no salt, no pepper The seeds of the cucumber stick inside the water bladder but the boss are waiting on the mobbers at the wedding of Commander. Bingo. It is really sad to tell you about the child is that Bingo has. You may say I'm mad when I tell you about the child is that Bingo has. My mama had five children, I'm the better looking one, <laughs> as you all could see. My mama used to beat me like if I wasn't she son one day. Granny said to she, don't beat mama poo poo. Don't beat mama poo poo. Betty, Betty, I warn you already. Like if you want to spoil the child, you got to teach it me. I know you did it ain't like you crazy, Betty. I love him a lot. He's the prettiest grand Bobo da da. I want to compliment all the steel band for the excellent talent and fame they brought Trinidadian. Yes, take this little tip from the terror. Yes, sir. Steel band come to stay forever. Why? I can't hear me years in England. Everybody want to learn to beat punk. Now they want to organize a police steel band in Britain. Yeah, do re mi fa son. La ti do. Band playing music anywhere you go. I tell you, true maluba, luba, luba, what a talent, excellent talent, you hear what I say? Man, the steel band music is the greatest talent today. Yeah. And tonight, I would like to pay tribute to Mr. Christopher Laidlow in the person of Lord Christo. Where ignorance is bliss, is folly to be wise. Is a dumb boy and a parrot open up my eyes In the evening when I'm going away from my house Like my girlfriend used to entertain, she by friend rouse But I had a bird, I used to give bird pepper And the dumb boy used to share in half of my supper We became friends because I was kind And this is how the boy tried to tell me in pantomime, the boy ball out, ooh, ah, eh, eh, eh. And the dumb boy pointing behind the eh, 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 lorry to say, yo, it walla walla bing bang. Thank you, King Solomon. Good morning, me Santa living here. <laughs> yes, yes, it's me. 
Now a woman from St. James report to me that you take she man from she. And as a police, it is my bungful duty to judge you full as any now you see. Santa take a big man from St. James and type like a cow in Mova. Sun and rain went in the man and he can't get away for fella. Yes, he really take a big man from St. James and type like a cow in Mova. Sun and rain went in the man and he can't get away for fella. Thank you. Lord Fluke. May blood jingle coal, I thought was a monster from the Grand Savannah. I could never forget Parrot up front getting hot and the monkey getting the run. It's a lorry, oh lorry, oh lorry, oh lorry, oh Give me some food and a mango. And it's a lorry, oh lorry, oh lorry, oh Give me some food and a mango. And it's a lorry. Jackson. And this is how Jackson goes. When you see me go, this is down the tree. I'm a no no this is down the tree. I'm a no no 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 down the tree. I'm I've heard something strange in my body. Better hear doom doom. Boom boom doom boom. Every night, like on in my bed. Here in this basement. Boom boom. Boom 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 boom. Yeah 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 Mr. Satchmo doing PP99 by Lord Kitchener. And this is how he will do it. I will pack my PP any place. Any place. Any place. With my big fat bamboo in my way. The record would come, record would come, and police will get a tip. Oh, yeah. All right, now I want to talk about another side of the relator that uh, people recognize you for, which is your extempo capabilities. And let's talk a little bit about how you got into extempo. What made you realize that you could extempo? Small Island Pride comes to mind even, you know, readily because um, we, you would hear um, live um, recordings from the original Young Brigade of Sparrow's tent and you would hear Small Island Pride singing in the minor and he, I think he is what sparked off by uh, wanting to extempo. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, well, you, you pretend I was there long before Relator and Gypsy came on the scene and um, I think Melody and Sparrow to a lesser extent. They didn't do it as much as Pretender and Roaring Lion, you know, but you know, they, 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 were, they came after doing Extempo. And I, I always have, it impressed me, you know, it, it, I was fascinated by, you know, how people can get on a stage and... Um, and um, could, could you Extempo right now, for example, on what's happening in this interview? Well, Mr. Daniel, please take my advice. 
I think the interview, it is going nice. But to, on note, which is rather sad, I know you're not spending Christmas in Trinidad. Listen carefully to the relator. I hear you're going to spend Christmas in Atlanta. So right now, the relator want to declare, I wish you a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. <laughs> <laughs> what has been the high point in your career? Well, there are many, you know, there are, high, there are a number of highs. I think the nostalgia thing was big. You know, the nation was able to see a, um, a gentleman leaving the Calypso tents and, 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 and being a one-man show and then being ready to, to go out in the world and do the Calypso on a, on a large scale. Winning the Calypso Monarch was, was um, another um, high point. And what was your biggest disappointment? I don't have many disappointments. Uh, funny enough, you know, the, the media is, 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 is who I, 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 if there's a disappointment, is the, is the media. I will, I will point my finger, and the people in the media, they know who they are. If, the, if there's a sour point in the, in the makeup of the person relator, in the person bunny, mm -hmm. I feel that there are, there are people in the media who, who feel uptight about, you know, you know, people, I, I, this is the impression that I get that they, people don't want to deal with the success that you join and the rapid progress that you're making. Now, it's significant that um, you have not been really honored in Trinidad for your extempo uh, capabilities, but that you had to go all the way to Grenada to get a little something. Uh, we have a little plaque here of some sort. Perhaps you can let our viewers see it. Presented to Willard Harris in recognition of your contribution to the extempo calypso art form. 2nd of October, 1991. Tell me a little bit about this um, presentation you received. Yes, this presentation came right after the Grenada National Extempo competition. In the competition this year, they had 18 guys um, competing. And they, this was narrowed down to, I think it was eight, and then four, and then the final two. Gypsy and Relator were, were invited to observe and be guest artists on this Grenada um, Calypso um, Extempo competition. After all was said and done, after they, they decided on who was the best two in Grenada, they had the guy who came second sing against Relator, and the guy who won sing against Gypsy, you know, as, a, as an exhibition bout. Um, I don't have to tell you um, the results of this. Um, <laughs> you know, all of these are my students, Mr. D. Well, these fellas look, look anx anxious. Yes, they're all of my students. You they, see them? They look anxious yeah. to make some sort of contribution. Oh, yeah. Maybe we could get them in or bring them back or something like that. Uh, yeah, so this is the cue to bring them back. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> now and again, it's nice to go down memory lane. Now and again, it's nice to go down memory lane. A little bit of nostalgia is good for the soul. Reminiscing about the days of old, Trinidad and Tobago was really sweet. When we remember the nice things we used to eat, you remember Krumar or Indian sweetie? Bring them back, bring them back. I'm sure the children today go love chili BB. Bring them back, bring them back. I hardly see in guava cheese and guava jam. Bring them back, bring them back. Coconut drop and cuvette poach jam. Bring them back, bring them back. But Mr. Daniel, you must understand, I must say something about the cameraman. What I want to say, you must understand, he working 30 years in the TV station. What I'm going to say, I want you to know, he working with TV 30 years ago, and I don't want you to find that related dread. You could notice why the hair he have on his head. You remember Chroma or Indian TV? Bring them back, bring them back. I show the children today go love Chili BB. Bring them back, bring them back. In those days when you eat a tolom, bring them back, bring them back. If any fall on your clothes, his licks on your boom boom. Bring them back, bring them back. Well, that now the relator is very glad to talk to the nationals of Tobago and Trinidad. This is what I would now declare. I want to wish them Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Greetings from the relator and Mr. Daniel. These two greetings you cannot forget at all. So what I'm going to say, I'll tell you straight to your face. Wishes from Kaiso Showcase. <laughs> Life is a stage, and we are the actors, and everybody have a part to play. Like a never-ending movie, we 
with all different characters. Each one have a role to portray. Down to the scavenger and them barristers and them doctors and lawyers and them ministers. So this honorable this and this honorable that and this lady so and so is a part they come out to play. I want you to know. Well, I hope, I hope Emerald was listening to that. Yes, and Andrew Boyce. This is a, a tribute to Lord Kitchener, hot off the press. The history of Lord Kitchener will tell you a great composer, social commentator, musician, hero, professor, a natural leader, tent owner, teacher, and tutor.